let's just get started. Um, yeah, welcome to the Merge and Planaris call number six. Um, today is going to be pretty straightforward, I guess. So um, we'll start from implementation updates as, as usual. Uh, there is, uh, yeah, there is update from my side. I'm working on the transition process implementation in TACU um, because the PR has been merged um, into the into the spec repo. Uh, so I feel like I'll finish this implementation like um, at the end of this week or uh, early next week, and we'll try to. Yeah, the, the next challenge will be to um, set up the locally the proof work chain allows the beacon chain do all these uh, steps that we do all the, the steps that we um we did on the mainnet already and uh, yeah finish it with the merge transition process so probably i'll just yeah, yeah likely reuse uh, the uh, scripts that we have from after ionism which is great and yeah, we'll use the um, the Gary PR, which already contains the transition logic um, in GAF. So we'll see. This is like the update from my side. Um, does anybody else have an implementation updates? Yeah, I think it makes sense. Everybody is working on the corresponding hard forks. So, okay, cool. Mm, any questions here? Okay, great. So let's move to the research updates. Um, have like a couple of things to mention and probably discuss. Do we have Justin on the call? I guess we don't. No, I can give a quick context. I mean, 2472, okay. just Justin yep. is uh, known for going through polishing and merging uh, and making sure that kind of the specs conform in terms of naming conventions and structure and all that kind of stuff. So he's done that on the, the recent merge specs. Uh, it's been a, bu a bunch of review. I just did, uh, it's now passing um, CI and, and um, has incorporated the, the feedback so I gave it a, a plus one this morning. Um, if anyone wants to take a look at it, please do. Um, otherwise, I will probably merge it tomorrow. Yep, cool. Yep, so I'll just drop this, the PR just in case. So yeah, there are some renamings and reorder of the fields in the execution payload. This is one of the, like, not substantial, but the biggest change, I guess, right? So in some renaming some of the methods. Um, Yep. Okay, cool. So then, yeah, yeah. The next one is the Randall PR. So there is a PR which adds the Randall to the execution payload, um, as it's been discussed on the previous call. So it uh, passes the Randall into the difficulty field of the execution block, um, and then mm, it will be. Um, yeah, as the difficulty already presented in the um, EVM context and can be used by difficulty opcode um, to, and yeah, and this is the way the Rendao will be exposed in the EVM for the applications. Um, we will support, uh, or better to say, we'll not break the existing applications that uses difficulty as the source of randomness uh, by this um, change. And uh, potentially, like after the merge um, in the cleanup work, uh, we will probably and we will likely and we want to do it in the following way. So the Rendell will be sent directly um, to the EVM context, uh, and it will not be embedded in the execution payload. Um, so, and like the reasonable question. Here, what if we like do this um, like at the point of merge and it's the minimal version? Um, 
the counter argument to this is that we don't want to uh, change the, we don't want any changes uh, in the EVM, um, like in this first uh, merge iteration. But anyway, um, what do you think, uh, how much of a big deal it will be to um, directly embed Rendao into the EVM context? Um, yeah, I mean, my, my argument would be that we have to change difficulty it has to go like because there is no it needs a new context and so defining it as a constant or taking it as the value off of that rpc um has probably negligible complexity difference and so we might as well do it at this point is that the question yeah that's the question so is yeah, it a big I, deal you have to directly send it to the evm without Yeah, I mean, the execution layer gets certainly gets context and directives. And so um, I don't think it's a big deal, but I'm not managing the software on that side. Yeah, this is the question. Yeah, mostly to um, mainnet client implementers. How difficult is to change the. Well, and again, it will have to be changed. It might be like if post merge difficulty equals one, um, or if post merge difficulty equals this value that's been passed in. We could yeah, hear from Thomas because or Rai. Because we're changing it already, I think I think it's fine to do it at the same time. Yeah, the difference is that you don't need to change the EVM at all uh, by using this uh, this route. By just embedding the Rendao into the difficulty field. Like, um, I don't think that it's like a big um, amount of work either. Probably some testing to, to cover this case. And Tomas in the chat says, sounds okay. So I don't know if I mentioned this, did you? Uh, Mikhail, but you said at some point you wanted to change it to something else, um, or is this embedding it as the difficulty field kind of the final place you expect it to rest? No, it's it's not kind of final place. So okay. this is just well, not to not to have that. a deal with uh, EVM uh, at the beginning. This is just more a workaround than the final solution. Wait, why is this a workaround? I'm confused. Yeah, why, why is this not final? Uh, you mean to use difficulty? Uh, I, I mean, to, to use, use Randall use as option. this. My question was, so final in my mind was Randall in the place of difficulty in the payload. Right. Do we, is there some reason we would want to expose the Randall in the EVM through some other mechanism besides that opcode. I mean, does it make sense? Yeah, like, is there any reason like we would ever have to return to this? Like, if let's say we set, I forget what opcode difficulty is, but that opcode now just returns Randau value. Are we done forever? We never have to come back to this? Like, the EVM now has random number generator at the end? Yeah, I mean, if that value was hardened, say with a VDF or something else, then it would be subbed for that new new hardened value. But um, yeah, it's two fifty six it. bits. It's not. Uh, it's not quit. It's like the full and down mix. Yeah, we're just uh, we're just talking about the way the rendown mix is put into the EVM is exposed by the EVM, the source of it. Is, is it going to be the part of the execution payload or is it going to be um, like a side value that is used by the EVM um, without like um, being put into, into the oh, block? I, I think it makes hashed. sense to put it in the payload. I don't see an issue that, with that even as a final destination. I mean, the issue is that people will soon start depending on that it is the Randau and not a random value because the Randau is a specified source of randomness then. Is that a problem? Can we use a different source later on? 
No, I don't think it's this problem. So we, we can call it Randau anyway and use another source of randomness. So I would like, so Randau is a kind of abstract thing here. Because if we just want the random value, we could even take the hash of the Randau or whatever, right? But if we say that it is the Randau, then people would start using it for other correlations as well, not just as a random value. Wait, you can't do anything else with Randau, can you? Like so there's it's, nothing. It's already the Randau mix, so it's already hashed and XORed. So it's not uh, it's not actually like the signature. Um, so it couldn't be used for you couldn't do like a signature verification on it or some other thing. Uh, but if that's I don't see that at the, that danger. Like even if it were the signature, there's nothing in there. In my opinion, it's just the signature of the slot. Well, people might do some sort of validation against, yeah, like on chain validation of stuff, and then you take that away, and you're like, oh, the Randau is now this other random number. And they're like, oh, my contract's broke because I was using that to verify blocks. Or I, yeah, I mean, obviously I, that's really stupid. Surprised but... <laughs> if you could if you could do any on chain valuation validation because if it, it doesn't what... contain anything relevant. If it were the signature, you could put your entire contract in if Randau verifies, and then all the logic after that um, as a really nice. stupid mechanism. I think but nice because it's not a signature, so right, right. So it's it's the XOR of the hash uh, with the previous Randau mix. So so there's not a um, there's not weird. Well, someone can always try to figure out something weird to do, but um, it's. I just don't see how why you would do it because there's yeah. nothing useful you can do with it. It's I not agree. a signature of I a agree. block. It doesn't sign any any meaningful data. And it's so not even I a signature. It's, it's the value like today could, is not even yeah. a signature. It's right, just but the, you can yeah. you you can trace it back to a signature if you want. You could make a proof yeah. that traces it back to signatures, but they sign something completely useless. So it's yeah. not so like we we we, <laughs> we could call it random. Well, I think that's the point a little bit. The fact that we can't figure out in five minutes on a call what people will use it for doesn't mean that it won't get used that way if we say that it is the run now. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, like to, to Yasik's point, what if like I made a contract and the purpose of the contract was just to upload little bits of bacon blocks and states to it, just to add the information in there. And I said, oh, you know what, don't worry about uploading the brand out because we already have that because it's exactly what the op code is like it's a contrived example but there's an example yeah no that's fair that's definitely fair i would call it random you mean the up code or like if difficulty is going to get a name change itself? i would call it random okay Okay, so what I'm a bit worried about here is that we're changing difficulty, uh, which was like much less than 30 bytes. Um, but it will be 30 bytes um, after the merge, so it will need to be checked um, whether there is no overflows uh, in the execution clients. I, I believe. But I think I think the execution clients after the last call, and I think all of them got back and said it's 256 bits. Um, I can go verify that, but no one oh, said right. it was but, not. But if they're doing right. a total difficulty calculation and summing that for some reason, they could have right. weird overflows, even though they shouldn't be using total difficulty really anywhere after that point or anywhere meaningful after that point. Uh, right. Oh, I see. You're just saying it's like there's a potential source for bugs during the merge that we need to watch out for. Right, yeah, this is the potential source of bugs. Uh, and uh, if we set like difficulty to zero or to one, uh, there will be no this kind of source of bugs and then we will have to pass Randau aside of the execution payload. Right, but That's like the only thing. And here. also if you set difficulty to one, you might accidentally um, like still kind of use longest chain rule and it be correct some of the time. And you don't, you don't want to accidentally be correct some of the time because then you have an attack vector. Right, you can set it to zero um, anyway. Okay, so this this is the PR that just yeah sub substitutes difficulty with uh, the random or random value, and um, we can rename the opcode after the merge, right? I mean, I mean renaming the opcode is a social thing. It has nothing to do with the code, like just right. a variable name and code somewhere. 
So I would. Yeah, and then saluted tape. Probably. I just want to highlight that, like anything that like this, uh, probably would need to make its way into being an EIP. Um, but that's maybe a whole separate conversation as to how this shows up in that process. Right. This is like the next item on the agenda. Yeah. How do we document all these changes? Right. Okay. So uh, if we're finished with the Rendau, um, if anybody um, like want to look in the PR, it will be very much appreciated. So um, I think if there will be no blockers, we can merge it like uh, on the next week. So please um, take your time if you have it. Take a look. I think we can move on to do the stacks of the execution layer. Um, so, yep, Tim Baika uh, raised like very reasonable question. What yeah. do you look for? Yep. Yep. Yeah, so not, yeah, I guess one thing is figuring out, you know, where do we want to have the specs for this? Um, I think, you know, on ETH1 currently EIPs is the best place. Uh, there's some work happening on an E2 style spec for E1, but you know it's not ready yet, and I, I wouldn't necessarily want to block on that. I feel like the even more basic than that, though, we probably need just a sort of list of like changes or, or open questions that we need to answer for E1. Um, I think that would that would be useful, like obviously for us to kind of have a broad picture of like this is all the stuff we need to do. Um, and I think it's also something that will become increasingly useful as like the community asks one merge um, to have some list of like, well, these are the things we need to, to, to solve. So I'm happy to help put that together, but I'm curious, yeah, what the people feel is like the best format for this. Um, yeah, does that generally make sense basically? Yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, right now the Ethereum specs are kind of the summation of the yellow paper and EIPs and stuff. And I, I think that's attempted to be captured in that ETH10 specs repo. Um, so even if there is an executableness there, maybe that should still be kind of where the execution layer um, specs ultimately go. So yeah. I, I think it, assuming we don't have some sort of executable spec on that side, I, I would argue to have some sort of uh, selection of EIPs that dictate this change and anything that creeps into the EVM um, and then put them into a fork and ETH10 specs. It's probably easier said than done though. It could be quite messy. Um, and we did do a informational EIP for the Beacon Chain launch. Um, yeah. It might make sense to have an informational EIP that just kind of explains and locks down versions of stuff, but I, I'm speaking outside of my domain at that point. Yeah, I think we could have like an informational or meta EIP that's kind of a, a description. And um, I think the one thing uh, that makes this different from like a regular hard fork is there's a lot of non-consensus changes that I think are important to document. Like, you know, all the stuff around syncing, for example. Um, if like, it's obviously like a massive part of the merge, um, but it's not like something that's actually like a hard fork. Um, so I think those are also the type of things we wanna make sure we kind of have a list for. Um, and, and I think those can all be EIPs as well, right? Like it, it, it's fine, we have, uh, I think EIPs for some of the syncing protocols, definitely not everything, um, but we can open like networking EIPs for this stuff. Um, yeah. So I don't know if that's the format people want to use until we have something better, we can just have it in the ETH1 specs repo and, and, and use EIPs as like the templates of the various changes. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep this brief since I think everybody here has already heard my arguments and we don't need to spend too much time on it. Um, EIPs is a specifications repository. It's a place to keep technical specifications. It is not a place to document things. Like it is not a documentation repository. There are far better tools for documentation that we should be using. Um, I'm a huge fan of documenting all this, getting everything written down. I'm not arguing that we should not document it. I'm just suggesting EIPs repository is not the right place for non-technical yeah. documentation. Like if yeah, you so want I think to write that a would... spec, like, oh, just a technical spec. EIP is a great place. For everything else, 
HackMD, Ethereum.org, like a wiki, GitHub. Yeah. Anything. So I think we can use the ETH one specs repo to do the, you know, this broad documentation. If even, you know, if like you think it doesn't make sense to have a meta ETH or informational ETH, like fine, we can put that in the ETH one specs repo, but the, this kind of documentation is kind of a wrapper around several technical changes, right? Like what we do about difficulty, what we do about syncing and, and, and so on. Um, and it's like that lit and, and you know, do we want that list, each of those technical changes to have an associated EIP? And if people want to do that, I think, I think that's fine. Uh, but it's just good to know kind of already because maybe we can start drafting some of these EIPs and you know, putting together something in the ETH1 specs repo that says, hey, this is the merge. Here are the various EIPs. Here are the things we still need to figure out, but haven't gotten around to writing an EIP for. As a, as a first step, Tim, maybe you, I, and, and others should black box the functionality from the beacon chain and then enumerate everything that we know is that, that we've already kind of specified as changing and know that we will be specifying as changing even on sync opcodes that kind of stuff um yep. and then once we've enumerated it all figure out the home for the the different things okay yeah that sounds good i can follow up with you and uh Mikael and other people offline to, to get a first draft of that great um, yeah, um, like I think we need a kind of timeline with checkboxes, right? Yeah, so I'm arguing for the checkboxes to avoid the timeline. So I think, uh... <laughs> and I think we did this fairly well with 1559, where we have this checklist, um, because there will be increasing pressure at like the worst time when you know when stuff is like 50% ready people will start asking, you know, like when merge and being able to say, well, okay. look, you know, here are like 10 things we still need to figure out. Um, I, you know, both for us, like I think first and foremost, but also for the community, there's value in seeing like, oh, the consensus changes are done, but like sync is broken or, you know, JSON RPC is broken or, or whatever, right? Um, yeah, I, I definitely would not put dates on that document um, and kind of use it as a shield against having to provide dates. Okay, I see. Yeah. Um, okay, as for the EIP process, um, I think it doesn't make much sense to like put um, every different part of the um, execution client changes um, into a separate EIP. Uh, probably we can use the approach that has been taken in the click EIP, which just describes all the things in one. Um, documents what do you think i mean once we figure out the sync process once we figure out yeah, yeah sync process definitely will be a separate spec um as we have but like all the before. consensus changes maybe on each right. one yeah yeah i don't have yeah. a strong opinion for against that yeah well the so consensus the changes should be like in one uh, place i guess the argument for having lots of small EIPs is that they tend to go a lot smoother because the change set is small. Uh, what happens when you have a large like monolithic EIP is you get a bunch of bike shedding on some like minor th piece of it, and then the entire EIP gets kind of stuck in the mud. Um, also, you end up because conversations tend to be centralized around like the discussions to link. You get like this just massive thread that everybody unsubscribes to because there's just too much talk about that bike shedding piece, and it's very hard to find the actual discussion. Um, so my recommendation is is try to split up, split up into as many smaller EIPs as possible, just because it really does make the process go a lot smoother. Um, EIPs that are like a page long go through almost instantly, whereas EIPs that are you know ten pages or so take way more than ten times as long to get through. Yeah, I think I would probably agree, but I want to see what those items are that actually need to make it into an EIP before we decide. For yeah. example, like this difficulty change being its own EIP, that makes sense. It's probably like a one pager and it's 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 pretty easy. But I I there's yep. It's unclear to me which things are gonna make it an EIP yet. Yeah, and figure out where where to draw the line is definitely an art. Um I, again, just I recommend caution. I've seen a lot of people try to do monolithic EIPs and it I don't think I've ever seen it go well. We'll we'll call so... upon the the artist of Micah to give us a hand. <laughs> the artist of Michael will be like, make this shorter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so uh, yeah, and for the moment when we when it makes sense to start like writing those EAPs, um, I think that we should figure out the transition process first um, to be to make sure that nothing like substantial will change. Um, also, it would be great to get the sync process figured out too. And then we can just put everything together that uh, changes uh, all the changes in the consensus for the execution side and put them together and see uh, what could be decomposed and put uh, in a separate AP and what could not be decomposed. Or, like, and yeah. This is just my thoughts on when and how. Yeah, probably we can start like uh, not wait for a sync process to figure it out and change something like in the EIP drafts later on. Yeah, I, I think so. Like I think, yeah, like Danny said, figuring out what are all the big kind of themes in a way. Um, and that'll give us a good picture of like the ordering and, and when it's the right time to actually uh, formalize uh, different parts of it. So, and uh, we're starting and we can get this uh, check boxes like now, right? Yep. I mean, yep. Okay. So we like get the document with check boxes um, in a short time, in short term, and then- um, Add links beside the check boxes in the medium. Right. Program. Yeah. And um, yeah. and. Uh, we already have some links beside them, actually. So those check boxes will be probably checked. Okay. And then once transition process is like prototype, prototyped, um, we can start thinking about EIPs, right? Um, I had this like um, research doc um, that I gave up to keep up to date. Um, with a list of uh, leftovers. Uh, this difficult thing was one of the last leftover. Um, I, I can double check with myself, but I think, um, yeah, now the transition and the sync, and that seemed to be all, yeah, but I'll check, check it out. And we can use it as a source for this, like document with check boxes. Okay. And don't forget the API. Right. You're right. <laughs> yeah, API. Yep. Okay, so if we Yeah, I think, uh, another with... another big item is probably um, testing and how test generation looks in this unified front and whether everything's kind of separated into these layers um, for more of the unit testing and then what things like Hive and other integration type tests look like. But let's maybe not solve that one today. Yeah, definitely. Uh, when I was like um, uh, saying that this difficulty thing is the last one or probably the last one, I was referring to the research open questions. Right. right. So we seem like we don't have them. Um, okay, if we're finished here, we move to the open discussions. Um, uh, by the way, um, I forgot to ask, does anybody have any other research updates? Yeah, if not, I have like a small one. I've started to write the um, consensus API improvement proposal. Uh, this document is about uh, improving the communication protocol, um, planning to finish it next week and share with everyone. Probably it will take more time, so we'll see. So this is like in progress too. Mm. Yeah. Okay, any other discussions, anything else? Any pro announcements probably?
Okay. Thanks everyone for coming. It was pretty short. Oh, that's well, yes. Yep. So um, we have Altair upcoming. And I'd like to just mention that at some point we need to rebase onto Altair. Not everyone here is affected, but right. it will affect those that are implementing the merge. So we should try and time that so that we can move in sync. Yeah, sure. Thanks, brother. Yeah, there will be some other changes like cleanups and probably yeah, new consensus API. Um, to catch up with after Altair. Yeah, also regarding testing. Um, so I have like a kind of plan to finish with the transition process um, and then get back to the work and spec and um, tests in particular. We will need some kind of test for the transition process as well, uh, which will involve uh, the, both uh, consensus and execution sites. It's going to be like interesting thing to to do. Yep. We have a bit of um, these kind of like fork integration tests for Altair from phase zero Altair. So we can at least use some of that as a basis, but how we exactly integrate and or stub the execution side in those tests we'll have to figure out yeah okay thanks everyone i'll see you in 25 minutes thanks everyone Bye. Bye. was was this the call that last week two weeks ago we were arguing about uh, api or was that the uh, e2 call e2 call okay